guys, how's it going? It's Al, DraftKings Thursday Night Football. We've got a great showdown. Well, we've got a showdown. Between the Tennessee Titans, the fighting Will Levises, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers favored by three. Total in this one is 36 and a whole. I'm sorry, these really low totals just, they get me and can't deal with it. Anything under 40. We're going to try and sift through everything that's out there for this slate to try and identify the optimal captains. We're going to talk about a couple of plays that could be low percentage plays that project to possibly be low percentage plays at low prices to open up and unlock uh, a lot of salary up top so that you're not holding hands with a bunch of people. We'll fill out an underdog, pick them, as well as take a look over at Fantasy Labs to see about building 150 lineups and make sure that you check out before it possibly goes behind the paywall, their new Sim Labs product over at Fantasy Labs. Go to smizzle.tv slash labs with an uppercase L to go check all of that out. So thank you guys for being here. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the notifications bell, and let's go. He's a legend. The week nine Smiz Gang Listener League is up 4,000 seats in this one. Filled last week, filled the last whole bunch of weeks. $10 to enter, three max, best tournament that exists on DraftKings because it has absolutely no reek, but you cannot find it in the DraftKings lobby. You got to go through my link tree, smizzle.tv slash links in order to get to that, as well as links to everything else that I do. Literally go to smizzle.tv slash links and click every link that's there. That's the easiest way to do everything. So just, just do that and then also enter the listener league. Let's go take a look at this slate. The big dog, Derrick Henry, did not get traded at the deadline, which kind of sucked. He's listed as limited on Tuesday's uh, estimated practice report. So, like, if he plays, we're going to treat him like the normal Derrick Henry if he plays. And if he doesn't play, then Taiji Spears gets a massive boost and is probably the most chalky captain that you could ever play and everywhere else. I'm assuming for the sake of this video that Derrick Henry is going to be in. If he is labeled out, you don't have to report it down the replies. You don't have to. I'm just letting you know you are freed from that. You don't have to do that. But if you wanted to stay up to date with all the newest info and all the latest news and what all the happenings are, make sure that you're a member here on the channel. Go to smizzle.tv slash join. It's $5 a month. And with that, you get access to the VIP rooms in our Discord, smizzle.tv slash Discord, where 10,000 members of the Smiz gang are all hanging out, trying to get better every single day. Uh, and we can discuss everything as it goes along with the slate. So make sure that you become a channel member here and join the Discord as well. You get a cheat sheet every single Friday for the main slate. Makes sense. So we will know well before lock what happens here and what path we are going to take. I'm operating as though Henry is in. DeAndre Hopkins got a toe limited at Tuesday's practice. So Henry dealing with an injury, Hopkins going through it as well. He's got a cap on his reps at practice uh, coming off of his biggest game, albeit three touchdowns on four targets. And it kind of came through, you know, Ryan Tannehill not playing. And so therefore, Will Levis, he of the mayonnaise in his coffee, completed 19 of his 29 passes for 26.62 DraftKings points. Fantastic debut for the youngster. We'll see if that's going to persist. What I like about it, here's some takeaways for me. Ran the ball seven times. That should improve his floor. He's not going to complete 19 passes for four touchdowns every single game uh, with a lot of downfield looks. Like It's just like that was an impossibility of a game, not to mention the fact that Hopkins clearly interfered uh, on the pass that he caught, that first 47-yarder or 49-yard touchdown that he had. That was clearly all OPI. Offen defensive backs don't just go spinning pirouetting out of bounds unless you yank on their belt and spin them behind you. But I appreciate the veteran move. Hop even like turned and looked at the um at the the side judge like, did you see that? No. Okay. Touchdown. Awesome. So like, he knew. If you're going to play Will Levis as your captain, we're gonna build that Tennessee group that goes along with it with every single one of his pass catchers. Uh, going with Hopkins, not going to play there. We're going to go with Oconco and Burks and NWI and Phillips and Moore, uh, as well as the kicker, uh, because the kicker does correlate very well with the quarterback. If the quarterback has one of those big days, that kicker is also going to have a day. Uh, so it does correlate well, and every single point matters in showdown. On the other side of the ball, Kenny Pickett. Dealing with an injury himself. He came out after practice today and basically said, I am totally playing on Thursday night. Like, 
they said are you going to be what if you don't he's no i'm playing like there's no doubt he is in so we don't have to deal with what is the situation if kenny pickett isn't there it's already kind of dire <laughs> like it's 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 week nine he has five touchdown passes like things can't possibly get much worse right we've seen flashes I'm probably not going to have Kenny Pickett as my captain in this slate, right? If you want to have Kenny Pickett, same rules apply. If you think he's going to have a 25 plus point game against the Titans, you are going to want to put, you know, multiples of his pass catchers because it's going to make sense to do so. A Rob, Calvin Austin, uh, any of those guys that goes along. Uh, where is he? The kicker, obviously, Boswell. Uh, and then pick a tight end in the absence of Fryermuth, right? Whether it's going to be uh, Hayward or whoever else. So I don't think that's the route to go. I think the route to go is the pass catchers in this one. So specifically two of them on this Pittsburgh team. One being George Pickens, uber talented, saw his lowest targets since like week two. No, sorry, of the season, right? Five targets last game, caught one. It ended up being a touchdown, a fantastic step over play uh, where he stepped over two uh, defensive backs to get into the end zone. If you're going to play him as your captain, we're going to tie Kenny Pickett to that lineup. Same thing goes for Deontay Johnson. The man who seems to be always open, always catches a ton of passes, can't find his way into the end zone anymore, mostly because he's not getting service on snaps that generate inside the 10 and his end zone uh, targets have completely just evaporated. But high floor DraftKings being the scoring that it is, full PPR bonuses, Deontay Johnson, high floor, high ceiling play, whenever he takes the field and there's touchdown upside here right like th this is not going to continue it can't you can't get this many targets catch this many passes for this many yards and just not find your way into the painted area so in the case that you're playing Deontay as your captain I'm going to tie uh Mitch uh, Mitch Trubisky Kenny Pickett to him as well on the other side of the ball already talked about Henry who's a viable captain Talked about uh, DeAndre Hopkins, also a viable captain in this spot. If we're going to play him, we're going to play Will Levis. Levis is the other viable captain. I'm really not seeing much else on these teams. I'm not going to be going uh, to try and get super cute with Najee Harris at captain. I think that Warren is the better back, but they're not giving him the touches. He's essentially just J.D. McKissicking his way through this season with like 10, 11 opportunities a game looking good every time that he does it but like we need 15 plus opportunities from him for him to be uh, a really viable play at anything other than flex and the fact that he's priced up to where he's priced up at in this showdown with harris at 72 warren at 64 both are going to come in heavily played because there's just not that much to do because of the nature of this slate let's head over to underdog fantasy and if you have not taken advantage of the free money that underdog fantasy is just laying out there for you you should massive first time deposit bonus uh i believe it's 500 dollars. it might be a hundred dollars whatever it is you want to go get it on your first deposit to the site when you use code al smizzle a-l-s-m-i-z-z-l-e all one word you get a free deposit bonus for the amount that you deposit up to 500 dollars. so why not get it and use it for something and try and multiply it like on something like this i'm gonna go off the reservation here okay let's go a little bit let's get weird let's go with ty j spears higher than 14 and a half receiving yards uh let, let's go completely bonkers here let's go with nwi over 17 i'm going way and then give me here and then higher than 18.5 receiving yards and higher than five receptions there. $50 to win 500. We're going to submit that, see if I can't bank on this showdown with the, you know, this is the hipster picks, right? Ty J, Jalen Warren, NWI. We're going hipster on this one. Go over to Underdog Fantasy and check out all the great products that they have. Head back to the slate. Let's identify. I got a few guys for, I got four of them. Low dollar plays and then our mid-range play of the of the week is is going to be Ty J Spears. Assuming that Derrick Henry is in. Now, if Derrick Henry's out, all bets are off. Ty J is going to project to get 15 to 20 opportunities in this game. Great in the passing game. Uh, very electric on the ground as well. Eight yards per carry here, nine yards per carry here. Big playability. An offense that knows how to run the football uh, and will open up holes for him. If he ever gets a big time shot, he is going to do big, big things. Uh, I was kind of thinking and or hoping that Derrick Henry was going to get traded at the deadline, opening up Spears for the rest of the season, but it did not materialize. So if Henry's there, Spears is going to be held, but I don't think he's going to be really highly held because of the nature of this price range. This 4,800 to 6,000 price range is always really low because everybody's always looking for that big guy 
uh that's really low price like last week i think uh trey on monday night was projected for the raiders to be like 12 percent owned and he was 32 percent owned at like 400 price so this is the one that always comes in under price so or under held ty j spears at his 5400 price range the cheaper guys we're looking at i don't know consider somebody maybe like chris moore downfield ability from him and if uh levis does take a shot downfield fine but everybody is healthy again so like he's a little bit thin with Burks back and NWI there. Um, Kyle Phillips, same sort of thing with him back as well. Now from his injury, three targets there, 800 for him. I prefer him to Chris Moore. And at tight end, Connor Hayward playing a bunch of snaps, getting a bunch of targets, 13 targets over the last three games. Uh, Fryermuth out for the season. He's 2,800. You're not getting the point per dollar production that you would get from the cheaper guys, but touchdown upside from a tight end if they happen to get in close uh, is always appreciated on a showdown slate. Let's head over to Fantasy Labs. Like I said, if you do not have an account over at Fantasy Labs, be sure that you use code, uh, not code, use my link, smizzle.tv slash labs with an uppercase L. We're going to load my template here. I got my 2023 showdown template. I don't allow kicker or defense and captain. If you think that this is a defense and captain night, go ahead, open it up. Uh, these are the rules that I start with for every slate. I will adjust them for every showdown slate. Pair your captain quarterback with at least two of their pass catchers and kicker. Captain quarterback with one of the skill position players from the other team. Captain, well, this is not really going to come into play very much for me on this slate. I'm probably going to have under 10% of both quarterbacks in total. Uh, captain wide receiver, make sure their quarterback's in the lineup. Captain tight end, make sure their quarterback's in the lineup. Limit to at most one defense and kicker from the same team. If you want to open it up to two for this slate because you think that there's going to be more field goals and touchdowns, go for it. It's totally fine. You can do that if you want. But I do make sure that I'm going to have at least one running back or wide receiver where their projected ownership is lower than 25%. We're going to have it build 150 lineups. Let's get rid of that filter there. Apply these settings and generate the lineups. Just realize that you're not going to go over to Fantasy Labs and click generate and all of a sudden start printing money. You've got to spend some time, work on your allocations, your combinations, uh, and definitely your correlation on those teams to make sure you're getting the lineups that you want with the guys and captain that you want, Xing out players, adding them, boosting them, and minimizing them. And much easier if you join our Discord. So hopefully we'll see you in there. Best of luck and look out for another video right there. He's a legend.